New moon energy can be an incredible opportunity for you to make big shifts in your life. And this new moon in Scorpio is certainly making us dive deeper than ever before. In this video, you're going to learn what new moon energy means in general, the two primary themes of this new moon in Scorpio happening on November 14th. And then I'm going to share four tips to help you work with this new moon energy and manifest your dreams. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the heart alchemist here to help you open your heart, heal your past and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell. So you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. On to part one of the video. What does a new moon mean? <laughs> All right. So the new moon happens once a month. And this new moon is, uh, from an astronomy perspective, it's when the moon is between the sun and the earth. <laughs> okay. So when the moon is between the sun and the earth, what ends up happening in the sky is the, the light of the sun hits the moon on the other side. And so the side that we see is completely dark. So really when it comes to the honest truth is that when a new moon is really new moon, we can't see it. <laughs> we can't see it at all. It's completely blacked out. But as soon as the, as the planets start rotating, moving just a tiny little bit, we can start to see a tiny little crescent on that moon. And that's kind of when we can get a little bit of an inclination that that's a new moon. But by the time we see any light coming from the moon, it means that the new moon has technically already passed. Okay. So officially a new moon, you can't see it at all because the moon is completely darked out. All right. So that's a little bit of the astronomy behind, uh, behind new moons. Now new moon from an energy perspective is a bit opposite from the full moon. Okay. So the new moon and the full moon, they operate together. All right. They're constantly working together. The new moon is all about new beginnings. It's about planting seeds. Okay. So, um, so for, uh, farmers that still use the moon cycles in planting, they generally generally plant in new moon cycles. Okay. So, and they'll harvest in full moon cycles. Okay. So that's generally how old fashioned farmers used to work with the moon energy. So this new moon energy is all about new beginnings, planting seeds, setting intentions. The new moon energy is very forward looking. Okay. It's, it's very, um, it's very forward looking in the sense that it's always excited about starting new things. Okay. So that's the general energy around new moons. Now, just like I said that the new moon and the full moons, they, they operate in tandem. Uh, I did a video on full moons. It was on about, it was about a particular full moon, but in that video, there's a lot of information about what full moon energy is and how to work with it in general. All right. So I'll leave links to that full moon energy video in the description box below in case you want to work with full moons, learning the difference between full moons and new moons. I'll leave that link in the description box below so you can watch the video after this one. On to part two of the video, the new moon in Scorpio. <laughs> so before I get into the themes of this new moon, there are two main themes, but before I get into the themes, I want to leave a little side note, ding, ding <laughs> side note right here. And the side note is that if you're watching this video, right as I'm shooting it, I'm shooting it. Um, as we near the end of 2020, if you're watching this video right on time, when I'm shooting it, I want to leave the side note for you to continue to work with these moon cycles from now until the end of 2020. All right. I've been talking about this already for a while, that full moon video that I shot recently and left a link to it in the description box below. I was already talking about this in the, in that full moon video. And I'm going to continue talking about it because these last moons of 2020 are really important in helping us purify the energy of 2020. 2020 has been a crazy year on multiple fronts. It's been highly transformative, but it's been very intense and highly purifying. The energy of 2020 feels very fiery to me on multiple levels. Okay. 
So it was a very fiery energy, very intense purification process that we've been through. And these last moons, they feel like they're helping us release this energy of this intense energy of 2020. So they feel more watery to me in the sense that they're coming in and they're sort of calming the fire down that has been 2020. Okay. And so if you're watching this video, don't just work with new moon or full moon cycles, you know, having to do with this particular new moon in Scorpio. No, keep working with new moon and full moon cycles from now until the end of 2020. All right. To take full advantage of this cleansing energy and this more soothing energy that's coming in through the moon to help us purify, release, and let go of the energy of 2020 so that we could come into 2021 with completely reset energy. Okay. So I wanted to leave this side note here first, before I get into the two main themes of this new moon video. First theme is Scorpio influence. <laughs> okay. So this new moon is in Scorpio. Scorpio is the most intense and focused of all Zodiac signs. Okay. So Scorpio energy is an energy that likes to deep, deep, dive. Okay. So Scorpio is the sign that's very comfortable in what's known as the underworld. Uh, it's very comfortable with what's known as shadow work. Okay. And so what Scorpio does is it just keeps diving deeper and deeper and deeper. Scorpio is not satisfied until he turns over every single rock of your inner world. Okay. So Scorpio lo loves to get to the bottom of things. All right. And so when you have have this kind of Scorpio energy with a new moon, it means that you're going to have to deep dive further than you would with a regular other new moon in other Zodiac signs. Okay. There's one particular aspect of Scorpio energy that's coming into this new moon. And that is the aspect of shadow work. Okay. What's known as shadow work and, and the shadow is nothing evil. The shadow just simply means the parts of yourself that you don't see and recognize or acknowledge. Okay. That's what the shadow means. And so when you have this Scorpio energy coming in, this Scorpio energy is not afraid of doing shadow work. And so it's going to deep dive, overturn every little rock in your inner world that needs to be seen, confront things that you didn't recognize in yourself and really integrate those things. All right. So, so the Scorpio energy is really adding <laughs> to the intensity of, of this, of this new moon. Now, if you want to go deeper into how to do shadow work, which would be great for you to learn before you do the new moon ceremonies in this particular new moon in Scorpio, if you want to go deeper on shadow work and how to do it, I shot a video on that and I'm going to leave links to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. So we already know that Scorpio in general is the deep diver of all Zodiac signs. Okay. But when it comes, when you pair the Scorpio with a, a moon energy, because moon is a lot about emotions, the feminine side of you, uh, but a lot about emotions. And so when you pair that with Scorpio, really what this Scorpio new moon is asking you to do is deep dive into your emotional connections. So what type of emotional connections do you have with those around you? And what type of emotional connection do you have with yourself? Okay. So the Scorpio new moon really asks us to go so deep and, and really be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves if we are having the depth of emotional connection in the world and within ourselves that we desire. Okay. So am I having enough depth in my emotional connections, both with myself and with those around me. Okay. So there are a couple of questions that I love asking during uh, Scorpio new moons. Okay. So here are two questions that you can journal about and ask yourself in preparation for this new moon in Scorpio. One of them is, and this is where I love this mantra and I love this question. This is pretty much where, where the success of every relationship lies. Here's the first question. The first question is, am I being my own soulmate? <laughs> I love this question so much because a lot of times when we're thinking about the emotional connections and the relationships that we have with others, we're usually expecting the other people to kind of be our soulmates and to be our companions. But what we rarely recognize is that if we are not our own companions, if we're not our own soulmates, nobody can ever be that for us. It'll never be enough. OK, 
okay? So this first question is really important to, to journal about and to ponder, to really ponder with a full heart during this new moon is this question of, am I being my own soulmate? Okay. Am I being my own soulmate? Another variation of this question that I love, it's just a different play on words, but sometimes people like to use the question differently. So another way of putting this question would be, am I being a good mate to my own soul? <laughs> different way of saying soulmate. Am I being a good mate to my own soul? You see these two questions point to whether or not I am having the depth, Scorpio, whether or not I'm having the depth of emotional connection with myself that I desire from the world too. Okay. So first start with self. Am I being my own soulmate? And then look outwards. Do the people in my life provide the depth of emotional connection that I wish to have in this life? Okay. So that's a second variation of the question. Once you answer the ones within, are the people around me loving me, nurturing me? Um, are they nurturing me as I know I deserve with the depth that I know I desire? Okay. So that's a little bit on what the Scorpio energy is mixing up with the new moon and asking you to work through. The second big theme of this new moon in Scorpio is the cleansing of the feminine. Okay. I've been feeling this a lot, both in my own body, but also in meditations and connecting with spirit and just kind of channeling in the, the messages that are coming through and the energies that are coming through in this last quarter of 2020. And what I've noticed is that especially in this moon, but in this last quarter in general, there's this huge theme of cleansing the feminine energy. Okay. And this has a lot to do. Uh, I've talked in previous videos about the new energy, that there's a new energy on the planet and that it's, um, it has a feminine tilt to it and that this energy is going to remain for the rest of our lives. And this is part of the process of what's going on. I shot a video on the new energy that's on the planet on the heels of the coronavirus. I shot a video on that. I'm going to leave links in the description box below so you can watch that video afterwards. But basically I've been talking quite a bit in 2020 about how 2020 is ushering in an era of feminine energy. It's the rise of the feminine that's been suppressed, repressed, blocked for thousands of years. Okay. And so what these, what this new moon is helping is to cleanse that feminine energy. It's still deeply wounded. There's been a lot of damage caused to this yin or feminine energy across thousands of, of, of years of just being suppressed and, and oppressed. Okay. And so there's been, there's always a lot of damage that can be created from, from, uh, oppressing or suppressing one of our energies. And that damage can be seen both within us, but also in the world around us, what has happened in the world in the last couple of thousands of years, maybe even more where the feminine has been dishonored. Okay. And disregarded. And so that theme of cleansing the feminine is coming up a lot for this new moon. And what it means is that I'm going to sit and really take inventory of, of what's been going on with the feminine energy across these last thousands of years, taking stock of what's happened both within myself and on the planet. So what this means for this new moon in Scorpio is that I can use the energy, not only the powerful energy of the moon, but the powerful energy of Scorpio. And I can deep dive into myself and find within myself, whether I have any remnants of the wounded feminine or distorted feminine. Okay. What's known as the distorted feminine. The masculine also has distortions and the feminine also has distortions. And basically what it means to be in distorted energy or distorted feminine or distorted masculine is that when an energy starts to behave in ways that are outside of its natural, sovereign, authentic, uh, um, template, it starts to create distortions because it's not acting in integrity. Okay. And whenever I'm not acting in integrity, I create distortions. Okay. And so there's still a distorted feminine template out there that we all carry. All right. I want to leave a little side note here too, because if you haven't heard me talk about the feminine, I don't want to create any confusion. So let me leave a little ding, ding side note here. 
When I'm talking about feminine energy, I'm not talking about women. And when I'm talking about masculine, I'm not talking about men. Okay. We all have feminine and masculine energies, yin and yang energies within us, all of us, whether we're men or women. Okay. So even if you're a man watching this video right now, while I'm talking about cleansing distorted feminine templates, you've got them in yourself. Okay. So I wanted to leave this clear that this has nothing to do with gender. This has to do with the template plates that we have within us and we both have yin and yang. Okay. So the little, little side note, hopefully helps you if you're a little confused about this. Okay. Now, what is the distorted feminine? Let's go into that a little bit so you can help identify this in yourself as you're using Scorpio to go deeper in and using this new moon to help you. Distorted feminine is the template that was created again when she st when the feminine started to be suppressed in society, she began to create distortions. Okay. And you know, there are a bunch of characteristics of distorted feminine. That's the one that we're talking about here in this video. Uh, distorted feminine has, she believes, and, and again, I'm using she and he, but I don't mean gender. Okay. So hopefully play along with me here. All right. I'm using she for feminine, he for masculine, but again, I don't mean gender. Okay. So the feminine, when she distorted, she distorted because she started to believe certain things about herself in response to the oppression and suppression from the outside environment. So here are some characteristics of the distorted feminine template that exists within all of us. One of them is powerlessness. Okay. This is very deep. The moment that I start to be pushed down, there could be a point in my mind where I think I don't have any power. Okay. So powerlessness is a big thing of the distorted feminine template, uh, believing she's weak. So weakness is another part of the distorted feminine template. Um, believing that being manipulative, this is huge. So what the feminine energy had to do to survive was she had to learn how to manipulate in order to at least retain some power because it was, everything was taken away from her. Okay. So manipulation is a part of this distorted feminine energy. Um, uh, codependence. Okay. So she started to believe that the only way she could survive was she needed to rely on the masculine as her provider. Okay. So codependence. All right. Uh, being dependent on the other energy. Okay. So I could keep going. There are various other characteristics. Um, she started to feel, here's another one. Here's another one. This one's important. This one just literally dropped on my head right now. <laughs> Okay. Sexual distortion. Okay. The feminine is the holder of very powerful and beautiful sexual energy that gives rise to everything on the planet. But the moment that she is starting to be shamed about her sexual energy, she starts to feel shame of her own nature. Okay. About her own nature. So there's a lot of shame of my own sexual power and of my own sexual energy and of being a sexual being to begin with. Okay. This is present in the distorted feminine template, a shame of sexuality and a shame of using sexual energy. All right. So there's another one. And so these are just some characteristics, some characteristics of the distorted feminine template. And so now what you can do is you can use these Scorpio energies and these new moon energies. You can go within yourself and you can ask yourself, do I have any of these characteristics of this distorted feminine template? Do I have them within me? Have I played them out in the world? And if so, I'm going to use this new moon energy and this Scorpio energy to please cleanse these templates from from me so that, that I can upgrade my feminine, my inner feminine template. All right. This is really important when you're working to cleanse distorted templates is that in their place, you want to have an upgraded template that is more aligned with the authentic energy. Okay. So when you're implanting a new upgrade in the internal feminine, what you're really saying is you are ready to stand in your feminine power as she was authentically meant to be okay. In her true authentic power and her truth. Okay. So that's, that's the upgrade of the feminine template. And we're all doing this work. And this is a great moon to help you do this further work of finding any details or any particularities of feminine, distorted feminine energy that you can have in you, that you're still playing out in your outside world. And if you are catching it, healing it, cleansing it and upgrading that feminine template. 
If you feel a bit uncomfortable working with the feminine or you don't even know what authentic feminine energy means, again, if you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. If you want to connect more fully with your feminine energy, especially in preparation for this new moon and the cleansing of this feminine, I shot a video on feminine energy. I'm going to leave a link to the, in the description box below for that video. If you want to catch it after this one and go further into your feminine energy, what it is and how to work with it in preparation for this new moon. There's a particularity about this new moon that seems a bit contradictory. Okay. So I want to, I want to leave this note here and talk about this a little bit. And that is that when you have a new moon in Scorpio, it can seem a little confusing <laughs> because new moon are all about new beginnings, looking ahead, looking to the future, setting goals, starting new projects. <laughs> okay. So that's new moon energy in general. Whereas Scorpio energy is an energy that deep dives, goes into the underworld, turns all the stones, and it can be focused on the past. So Scorpio, a lot of times Scorpio energy can be focused on the past. So then the question, the million dollar question comes and that is how the heck do I pair Scorpio energy that's going into the underworld and looking to the past with new moon energy. Okay. So I want to leave a little trick here for you on how to work with these energies that seem contradictory, but they're not. The trick is this, you use the Scorpio energy to acknowledge and see what has happened. So you're basically using this Scorpio energy as a catapult <laughs> to the new moon energy and moving forward. Okay. And the way you do this is you just make an honest assessment of the things that have happened. So in this case, we're talking about feminine energy. That means you can sit down and you can just ponder the things that have been done across thousands of years to this feminine energy how it has been repressed, how it has been dishonored. Okay. Dishonored. There's been a lot of horrific things done to the feminine energy, you know, to the extremes of sexual violence, rape, torture, to women being burned at the stake, um, to all kinds of things happening to, to this feminine power during the inquisition. There's a ton of things that have happened but the pain is deep. And so what you do is you can just ponder, look at the things that have been done to feminine energy within yourself and in the world across these thousands of years, and then use that energy, take lessons from it to catapult you into the future. Okay. So it's almost like you're playing this game of just not dwelling on the past, but just using the past to get some lessons there and then taking that information, that valuable information that you've derived from looking at all the things that have happened on the planet in these last thousands of years, taking those things and using them as a catapult to move forward. So you never repeat the, the mistakes of the past again. Okay. And you're taking those lessons that, that from pondering the past, you're taking those lessons and you're formulating new intentions here. There's the, the new moon. You're formulating new intentions and a new way of being moving forward, never forgetting those lessons. Okay. So this is a great way to use Scorpio energy and new moon energy, which seem a little contradictory, but they're not using them together. You get this beautiful energy of using the past to catapult you into the future. Okay. So I wanted to leave this note here in case you were a little bit confused on how you would use Scorpio energy with new moon energy but they do go together. You just have to know how to use the energy. Now to part three of the video, the tips to work with full moon energy. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to share four tips that I love and use when working with new moon energy. The first one, the first tip is uh, taking a ritual bath or shower. Okay. <laughs> now this may seem, this may seem a little odd, but I use this a lot, actually, not just in new moon, uh, in new moon ceremonies or during new moons, but I, I use ritualistic bathing a lot. And, and before you think I'm going way woo woo off the end, <laughs> off the woo woo end, <laughs> let me explain to you what ritual means. Okay. So when I say take a ritual bath, I don't mean it doesn't have to be like a three hour long process where you're basically baptizing yourself or I don't know, or, or doing anything, you know, that you might deem weird. Okay. You can do that if you want to, if you want to do a really long ritualistic bath, no problem. But the, what I'm talking about here can be something as simple 
as you setting a very strong intention before you get into the shower, setting a very strong intention before that water starts hitting you or you go into a bath, uh, a bathtub, uh, setting a really strong intention that you're using this bath or this shower as a means to cleanse your entire body in preparation for the new moon, okay? And you can do this with any other thing. It doesn't have to be for the new moon, but I love using ritual bath uh, for new moon ceremonies, okay? And so what this does is it helps to cleanse not just your physical vessel. Ritual, ritual baths have been used for a really long time, since, since the dawn of time, really, uh, in spirituality as a way to not only cleanse your physical vessel, but when you cleanse your physical vessel, you're also cleansing your energy system to a certain degree, okay? And so this ritualistic bath, I love using it. Uh, I don't have a bathtub in my house, so I do a shower, but what I generally do is I set a really strong intention before I get into the shower, and as the water is falling on me, I bathe myself slowly, very deliberately, with a lot of mindfulness. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not, because usually when we get in the shower, you know what we're doing. We're washing our hair, and we're like, oh my God, I gotta do this, and I should have said this to that person. Oh my God, I can't believe that person. <laughs> so you can really get into these daydreams Dreamings when you're in the shower, but when you're doing a ritual bath and there's no daydreaming going on, you are present, you're mindful, you're washing your body with a lot of mindfulness, slow, deliberate movements, okay? This is a purification process. It's a ritual bath. And during this, as you're washing yourself, you're holding the intention in your mind and in your heart you're holding the attention that you are purifying your physical vessel, you're purifying your energy system in preparation for the new moon ceremony that you're doing. It doesn't just have to be, you can do a ritual bath for anything really, but it's always your intention is, I'm purifying myself of energy and my body, um, I'm purifying myself in preparation for this, okay? For the purposes of this video, you're doing this ritual bath to prepare yourself for the new moon ceremony. Ritual bathing is really important to me during new moon phases because precisely the new moon is about new beginnings, right? So what a better practice to do than doing a ritual bath or ritual shower right before preparing for new beginnings because that's when you really should be cleansing your energy with more depth, okay? So again, you could use a shower like I do, nothing elaborate. I'm just very mindful as I'm taking a shower. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm holding the intention of purifying myself in preparation for the new moon ceremony. If you if you have a big bathtub at home, that's even better. You can, you can soak, you can put some Epsom salt, in it. You can put a little bit of essential oils in your bath, light up some candles around your bathtub, and you can make it a little bit more elaborate when you do have a, a bathtub because you can make it longer, right? So you could be in the water, you have all these candles, you immerse yourself in the salt, and, and but it, the, the intention is the same. You're holding the intention, whether you're using a shower or a bath, you're holding the intention that you are purifying yourself in preparation for the new moon ceremony, okay? So I love this practice of ritual bathing before new moon ceremonies. It really cleanses the energy and prepares you for what you're gonna be doing next. Tip number two is energy purification. So it's kind of a continuation of, of tip one that I shared, but it's, it's a little bit different, okay? So, um, so what I'll do, I'll take a shower, I finish my shower, I hydrate myself again nice and slowly, I'm doing this very mindfully on purpose in preparation for my new moon ceremony. I get dressed, whatever, then I go into my living room and I start to prepare the ceremony. And this is where the energy purification increases, all right? So I'll light up some candles, turn off the lights. So I'm working, I, whenever I'm working with moon energy, I'm in the dark, completely in the dark in my house or outside. And what I'll do is I will use smoke for further uh, purification, all right? Smoke is one of the oldest purifying traditions on the planet. Um, uh, shamanic cultures all over the world still use smoke today and have been using smoke for thousands and upon thousands of years. Okay, so I love using smoke as a purification tool, all right? So what I do is I'll light up some Palo Santo. Palo Santo is my favorite, uh, is my, I like using Palo Santo more than incense because I like the smell of Palo Santo more. And so what I do is I buy really thick, they look almost like logs, okay? So I buy thick sticks of Palo Santo and, um, and I use that for my smoker, okay? But you can use incense, you can use anything you want. You can use sage. 
Um, so you can use any herb or any element that you want that creates smoke. That's fine. Okay. But I love using Palo Santo. And so what I do is I light up the Palo Santo and you know, it'll, it'll, it'll light up at the tip. You let it burn for a little bit and then you blow it out and you're left with those embers. Okay. And those embers are going to start smoking. And then what I do is I just close my eyes. I invoke my guides. I invoke the power of the source that has created me. And I start to move the Palo Santo around me from head to toe, from head to toe. And I'll, I'm usually saying something as I'm doing that. It could be something as simple as saying, I purify my energy system in all directions of time. I love that mantra. I'll say it again. I purify my energy system in all directions of time. And I'm, and I keep repeating this as I'm going around and around, making sure that all areas around my body that I'm covering my aura, my chakra system. And I just keep going around and around and around. I repeat the mantra. I repeat different variations depending on what intuitively is coming up for me. But the point is I'm using the same, regardless of if you use the mantra that I just gave you or another one, that's fine. Just use whatever you want. The point is that smoke is helping to further purify you after your ritual bath. Okay. So using smoke, I love that. I do it for maybe a minute, maybe two, sometimes more. I'll, I'll purify, purify, purify the energy around me. Sometimes I'll even, after I purify myself, I'll move around the room or I'll purify my entire house. I'll go from room to room and just let the smoke of the Palo Santo cleanse everything in my house if I want to do it that way too. Okay. So you can, you can extend the purification with smoke out into your house, the space that you're, that you're in, or you can just keep it around you when you're doing the new moon ceremony. All right. The use of smoke is really, really cool way of, of purifying your energy. All right. So that's tip number two. Two. Tip number three is to set intentions. All right. I love doing this by using my journal. Okay. So I'll have my journal always with me during new moon and full moon ceremonies. I'll have my journal with me and I'll start to set out intentions. Okay. So remember new moons are all about forward looking new beginnings, planting new seeds. So when I'm setting intentions for a new moon, I'm looking ahead and I'm saying, you know, what, what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to manifest? What are my heart longings? That's another, that's another one too, to write down in your intentions. Your intentions aren't, shouldn't be coming from up here. Okay. Ding, ding pro tip. <laughs> Pro tip when setting your intentions, I'm not, when I talk about intentions, I'm not talking about, you know, the mainstream law of attraction, uh, uh, stuff that's out there where you have your vision boards and you're just manifesting Ferraris and million dollar homes. That's not my thing. <laughs> that is definitely not my thing. I talk about manifestation and setting intention from a heart perspective, a soul perspective. So when I'm talking about setting intentions, what I'm saying is, start setting intentions from your heart. All right. Nothing wrong with having a Ferrari, nothing wrong with having a million dollar home. I'm not against, I'm not against material things, but just make sure that when you're setting your intention, you're not just setting random superficial intentions that are coming from your ego. Okay. You're setting them from your heart. So what does my heart desire? What does my heart long for? And sometimes in this moment for this particular new moon, all your heart may be desiring is for you to relax, relax and feel peace. That's a great intention. You see, it's a great intention. It's a genuine intention that may be coming from your heart because your heart may be saying, you know, I'm so tired of you following your head all the time. I'm getting exhausted here. Can we just relax and have peace? <laughs> okay. So, so remember connect with the pure intentions of your heart more than with the intentions of the ego. All right. So that's the type of intention I'm talking about here. Journal them write them down. Remember what we talked about earlier in this video about how this new moon in Scorpio is asking you to deep dive into emotional connections, both within yourself and with others. So maybe uh, one or two intentions on that list of intentions that you're writing for this new moon can be again, do I have, you know, what is my heart long in terms of emotional connections with myself and with others? Okay. So you can set an intention. That's like, you know, I intend to connect more
more fully with myself. I intend to connect more deeply with the people around me. I intend to manifest a soulmate in my life after I've become a soulmate to myself. <laughs> okay, so see, these are some of the intentions that you can set out in the new moon energy, but setting intentions is crucial for new moons because it sets you up for the manifestation process that's gonna occur after that new moon all the way to the full moon. The fourth tip is to go deeper. <laughs> now this particular tip that I left here for last is a tip that's very specific to this new moon in Scorpio as opposed to regular other uh, new moons, okay? So for this particular new moon in Scorpio, go deeper, all right? We've talked a lot about how Scorpio is this intense sign of depthness. And so, um, I don't know if, is depthness a word? <laughs> I just caught myself now. Is that a word or, or not? Maybe just depth, I don't know. Anyways, moving on. So go deeper, all right? Scorpio energy is the energy of depth. It wants to go deeper and deeper and, deep, and deeper. So for this new moon, you can do this in two ways. One of them is you can go deeper by using the Scorpio energy itself, specifically invoking the planet that rules Scorpio, which is Pluto. <laughs> okay, Pluto is the planet that rules the sign of Scorpio, and you can actually work directly with Pluto in the same way that we work with, with the sun or with the moon. You can work with planets as archetypes of energy, okay? So you can invoke Plutonian energy to help you go deeper and deeper. Pluto is a tiny planet, but it's such a powerhouse. Uh, Pluto is also, uh, from a, a mythology perspective, was the god of the underworld, okay? So, so there's that aspect to it. So again, Pluto, you just invoking the planet Pluto can help you go deeper and deeper into, into, this, uh, into this energy, okay? So there's one way to go deeper. Another way to go deeper, and that's very pertinent for this new moon, given that I've been talking about feminine energy, is to invoke the feminine, <laughs> okay? The feminine energy is all about going within, going down deep, low. The feminine energy is, is circulates a lot down here in these lower chakras. When you start working with feminine energy, let me tell you, she is not afraid of the depths, okay? She's not afraid, and she's gonna keep pulling you there. Feminine energy is the this beautiful energy of the inner healer. That's your healer energy. Masculine energy is not the healing energy. Feminine energy is the healing energy. She draws you within, she draws you down so that you can go into the depths. When you're doing this, you can, you can just reach depths that you never thought possible. And the way that I like to invoke the feminine especially when we're talking about invoking the feminine in a new moon in Scorpio, what I like to do to invoke the feminine of going, the feminine aspect of going deeper is I invoke what's known as the dark goddesses, all right? Now, before you freak out with me saying dark goddesses, I don't mean dark goddesses as in evil, okay? <laughs> all right, what's known as the dark goddess archetype of the feminine energy, okay? So here are some representations of the dark goddesses. The dark goddesses are simply archetypes that help Help us go deep down into our underworld, into our shadow, into the places within us that we don't like to see or recognize in ourselves. That's what dark means. That's all it means. It doesn't mean evil, okay? So there are a few goddesses that symbolize this aspect of dark goddess energy, and you can invoke those, all right? So I'm going to leave you some of them to work with. One of them is uh, Kali. I love Kali so much. I invoke her so much when I'm doing deep inner work with the feminine. Kali. Another one, Durga. All right, so this is a, another uh, Hindu. Kali and, and Durga are Hindu goddesses, okay? So Durga, again, the warrior goddess. Uh, Durga goes, <laughs> the image of Durga is her riding a tiger. <laughs> Durga doesn't ride a horse. Durga rides a tiger, okay? So this goes to, the, to show you the power of this energy, all right? So Kali, uh, Durga. You can invoke Medusa is another one. Again, in our mythology and in our stories, Medusa is supposed to be this evil, this evil uh, feminine with a bunch of snakes on her head, but Medusa is a really powerful archetypal energy that helps you go into the depths of your own being. Lilith 
is another one, okay? Lilith, another archetype that has been very dishonored and that has been uh, distorted in our stories. Lilith is not evil. Lilith is, you know, not the, the, the image of temptation, nothing like that. Lilith is a really powerful, powerful aspect of an archetype of the feminine energy. And so I've given you a few of these dark goddesses that you can invoke as you're working with this new moon in Scorpio to help you go deeper. And the way that I do this is very simply, I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm in my ceremony, my candles are on, the lights are off, I'm in the dark, I have some shamanic music or I'm drumming myself. I drum a lot, uh, pretty much every day, but especially during uh, moon ceremonies drumming or shamanic drumming music. And sometimes I'll just close my eyes. You can even put a blindfold on if you're not completely in the dark. Um, cl I close my eyes and I will literally just start invoking Kali, 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 Durga. I invoke Durga. I please ask Kali to come into my presence and help me. I ask Durga to please come help me. And I literally start talking to them. I start invoking them like this as I'm dancing, as I'm drumming, as I'm connecting with their energy. I have the intention of connecting with their energy. So I connect with them and I invoke them and I ask them to please help me go deeper in understanding if there's anything within me that I'm not seeing, that, that I have a blind spot that I need help with and they do that, okay? So that's an easy way to invoke feminine energy, okay? So these are the two ways, invoking Pluto and invoking the feminine, these are two ways for you to go deeper in this new moon in Scorpio. All right, beautiful soul, now over to you. Let me know in the comments below what intentions you're setting for this new moon in Scorpio. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website to download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget these videos here that I talked about in this video. These are great for you to continue after watching this one. All right, beautiful soul, I love you. I'm out.